Hello everyone, Mr. Minix. My name, Math, is my game today. This morning, I'm joined by my favorite Algebra 2 class ever, my first period Algebra 2. Uh, chapter 6, Section 7, and if you're in my second period class, well, you're not my favorite Algebra 2 class, I'm sorry. And if you're in my fifth period Algebra 2 class, uh, Chapter 6, Section 7, Inverse, Inverse, uh, relations and functions. Uh, this is the last section of the chapter. We already covered 6, 8, which was graphing, if I remember right. Um, I'll be honest with you. I could spend an entire week of class going over this. We won't. <laughs> but we could. Um, so I guess we'll break this down the Long Beach way. The first thing we need to do probably is is look at this word here, this F word. Uh, I can think of an F word we're going to look at. Um, so, so we're going to look at this F word, functions. And let's just think back to Chapter 2 for a minute. Chapter 2, we looked at some graphs. I put some Cartesian planes on some paper, and, and we kind of looked at some graphs, and we said, okay, if you had something like this, if you had something like this, or if you had something that went like that, are each of those representative of a function? Remember what test we used to determine whether they, what do we use? The pencil tester, uh, there was another la uh, another name for it because we we would take one of these thingies, one of these, uh, something like this, right? What 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 is that? It's a vertical line, and we had a vertical line test. So this first drawing here on the left, is that a function? It is a function because it passes a vertical line test, right? Okay. What about this next one? It's not because it fails a vertical line test. And what about this last one? It's not continuous, but it is a function. It is a function. Okay. So, do we remember a little bit about that? That's going to come back. Because there was a vertical line test, so there's going to be a horizontal line test also. And hopefully we'll get to that before the end of today. So, we understand then about the vertical line test and whether something is a function. Now, as far as a relation goes, as far as a relation goes, um, I'm not going to talk about West Virginia or Wyndham today, so so um, don't worry about that. Um, we defined relations as a set, as a set of ordered, a set of ordered pairs, okay? And they were usually of the form X and Y, um, and, and so there was a whole bunch of them in a set. So we might have a set, and we might have X1, Y1, and then we might have X2, Y2. And then we might have a whole bunch more, and we might have x sub n, y sub n, okay? Who knows how many of them we have. But we just have a whole bunch of x's and y's. And sometimes relations are functions, and sometimes relations are not functions. Sometimes relations are functions, and sometimes they're not functions. Put a box around this. If we look at that... That actually is a relation, not a function. It is a relation because there's a set of ordered pairs that go along with that. There's a whole bunch of them, but there are ordered pairs that describe that. We are on the same page so far. Everybody doing okay? So you're probably thinking to yourself, self. Shout out to Kyle Borelli. He always gets a kick out of that when I say self. Um. Anyway, self. Uh, well, what about that third word? We talked about relations. We talked about functions. What about that third word? Well, what about that third word? What about that third word? The word inverse. The word inverse has another word kind of associated with it, attached to it. If we change the last two letters of inverse... Uh, we would have invert. And if you have ever watched any kind of skating, 
or bicycling um, or uh, snowboard competitions. There's something called like an inverted cap 900 knack knack he heel switch kick flip whatever I don't know what are they called. Isn't there some kind of inverted though? What's that mean to invert something? To do it the opposite way? There's a, there's a, an F word I'm thinking of when when we think to flip it right. So invert means to kind of flip something over right. To kind of flip something to flip something over. So when you invert something, you flip something over. Well, when we invert a function or a relation, we're also going to be flipping it over. Okay, so, so there's a reason that this thing has the name that it has. The difference is we're not going to be flipping it over what you might expect us to flip it over. Um, do you remember when we graphed parabolas? So we had something like y equals x, and it looked like that. What would happen if we took that and we, oh, yellow's a bad color, and we, uh, and we flip that over like that. That ends up being y equals what now? Y equals negative x, right? Now that's not an inverse. The fun that's not an inversion. The function is reflected, um, and in that context, you're thinking, well, it's flipped over. Yeah, it's flipped over. It's flipped over the x-axis, right? It's flipped over the x-axis. Um, so we're not going to do reflections necessarily, but this is some kind of flipping of a function, and we're going to turn a function, but instead of flipping it over the x-axis or even the y-axis, there's something else that we're going to flip it over. So far, so good? Well, there should be a question now. What are we flipping it over? If we're not flipping it over the x-axis, and we're not flipping it over the y-axis, well, what on earth could we possibly flip it over? And I'll tell you right now, the answer's not on Google. The answer's not on Snapchat or Instagram or in your text messenger. It is in the state standards. It is one of the three parent functions that I asked you to memorize. Inverse functions. Inverse functions and relations. Inverse functions and relations. Functions and relations are flipped over. Are flipped over. I could replace the word over with across. I could replace the word cross across with around. I could replace the word around with the word about. They're flipped over, across, around, about. About what? Let's think of those three parent functions I asked you to memorize. One of them was a quadratic, right? Well, that doesn't make sense to flip something around a quadratic because a quadratic moves all around. It was that absolute value one, but sometimes it's increasing and sometimes it's decreasing, and that would be kind of confusing. So guess what? We're going to reflect this or flip this around. Around what? Not a cube root. Not a square root. Something that I asked you to memorize the first, like, second week of school. The most basic function that you could graph y equals x has a slope of 1, y intercept of 0. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to be taking things and we're going to be flipping them over or across that line. So it might be nice if we know what that line looks like. So it would be prudent at this juncture to take a trip down memory lane. So let's go way back. Let's go way back. See if the smart board decides to catch up with me. We'll lock that in place. So y equals x goes through the origin, goes through 10, 10, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10. I already said 10, 10. I like saying 10, 10 again. Okay. So that's more or less what that line looks like. So what we're going to be doing when we find inverse functions or 
inverse relations is we're going to be um, we're going to be reflecting them across that line. So let me see if I can put these together because I'm going to need both of these right on. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to use that later. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to have something that looks like this, and we're going to need to reflect that. We're going to need to reflect that across or around or about or over this line. Do I have a volunteer to come on down and, and sketch what that would look like if we graphed that red circle thing reflected across that line? Anybody want to come on down and sketch it? Doesn't have to be exact. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. So you might say, well, how do I do this? Well, you could clone it if you want to clone it so it would be the same shape. Or you're going to draw it freehand? Okay. Right on. So that's a good try. Um, so, so the one that our volunteer sketched is down here, uh, pretty close to the same, same size. Let me just get it down to the same size because it should be the same size. Real close to the same shape. Um, so they sketched it down here. Um, that's a good try, but it's not quite in the right place. It's not quite in the right place, but it's a good try because it is on the other side of the line. I got a volunteer to drag it and move it where it needs to go. Come on down. What we're doing right now, by the way, is an essay question on the quiz that you're going to take over this. So we got another one that put it over there. Well, we're getting closer. Another volunteer that's going to that's going to make it right. Uh oh. There we go. You're trying to grab just the just the thing. There we go. Well, let, let, oops, I did it. Let me lock this in place. I might help you. We'll lock this in place. Locking. Lock that in place. Okay. Should be good now. Right there. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Anybody else? You know what they say about close? It counts in that beanbag game. I, I won't call it that name. I can't stand that name. That's a horrible name. Whoever named it, whatever. It does have corn in it, but I'm not going to call it the, yeah. Um, any other volunteers to, to put this where it needs to be? It's close. Now let's just look at a reference point. Th this, this thing was kind of right about here, right? So, so is it fair to say that this is the point, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's about six and a half units up. So that's zero comma six and a half, that point right there, right? Is that fair to say? So we've got a volunteer that's going to come on back down and fix it. Got this now. Yes, we need to flip that thing up on its end and then it's got to be over relatively the same distance. Do we get the idea there? Right on. Cool. So if we had something like um, something like Patrick. Something like Patrick. And Patrick was here and we wanted to invert Patrick. When we invert Patrick, not only is he going to go on the other side of the line, but his orientation is going to kind of change a little bit too, right? So he's vertical now, but if he goes on the other side of the line, he would have to be canted that away, right? And so Patrick would probably end up being somewhere right about there. Is everybody kind of getting the visual here of what's going on? So let's, let's look at something about Patrick's left foot. Patrick's left foot here is at the point negative 7, comma 0. Negative 7, comma 0. Now, if I reflect this the right way, if I invert this the right way, Patrick's left foot ought to be, ought to be at the point 0, negative 7. Do you see what's happening? 
When we reflect something across the line, Y equals X. Do you see what happens? What happens? Let's be real clear about it. Let's look at Patrick's head. Patrick's head has the coordinates um, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 7, 5. So on the reflection, Patrick's head should have what coordinates? 5, negative 7, right? Do we see what's going on here? Yeah, the X and the Y are kind of switching places, right? Right on. So, example 1. Find the inverse of y equals 2x minus 3. Now, I'm going to put a piece of graph paper up here, and you're saying, dude, why are you putting the graph paper up here? You're asking us to do some kind of algebra problem, and we don't need a graph paper to do an algebra problem. Well, it's going to help. And some people understand things way better with a graph. So if I had to graph this given, that by the way, this is given right here, okay? We know what this is. It's given to us. It's part of the problem. It, it wasn't made up out of thin air. It's given to us. That's the relation or function we're starting with. It has a y-intercept of negative 3, a slope of 2, and it ends up being a line, and I hope I can sketch it and do it justice. Um, it's going to go through those points, so let me see if I can get it going through those points. Goes to that point and that point. Does that look pretty good? Pretty good. Okay. So I want to find the inverse of this. <laughs> so the inverse of that, I can picture what the inverse of that's going to look like, right? I know that that thing goes through the point 0, negative 3. Whoop. Let me use blue here. 0, negative 3, and 1, negative 1. So what are some points that its inverse is going to be going through? One at a time. What do we got? I heard 1. Negative 1, 1. So its inverse is going to go through negative 1, 1, and uh, what else? And negative 3, 0, right? And negative 1, 2, negative 3, 0. So its inverse is going to go through those points, so its inverse is going to look like that. Graphically, do we kind of get what's going on here? How, it's, how the graph is reflected across that line? Awesome, right on. Awesome sauce. So we found the graphical representation of it, but what were we asked? We were asked to find the inverse. So we need to somehow, some way, with algebra, find an expression similar to that that represents the, the red line. Now, if you remember anything at all from Algebra 1, you could probably just look at the line and, and figure it out. What's its y-intercept? What's its slope? But its y-intercept isn't real clear now, is it? Oh, man. It looks like it's like one and a half for the y-intercept, but I'm not sure. It would be because of the slope is two, so the slope would be a half. Okay. So the y-intercept is one and a half. So the y-intercept is, is one and a half, which I said one and a half. So we could write one and a half as a mixed number or an improper fraction of what? Three halves or three over two? And the slope... The slope would be uh, would be what? The slope of the given one, the slope of this, the slope here is 2. The slope of this inverse is what? 1 half. So the slope is 1 half. And we write equations as y equals mx plus b, right? So we would have the inverse, the inverse. Now, you know what gets confusing? is when we talk about the inverse, we're going to use a y again, but we need some kind of way to annotate the fact that it's an inverse. And this is what gets confusing for people. Because at the beginning of the chapter, you studied exponents, right? And this is where it gets confusing. Rather than saying just y equals, because it's the inverse, 
when we, we are going to write y equals, we are going to write one half x um, plus three halves. That is our inverse. That is our answer. That is our answer. But our answer is going to have to have one little thing going on that's a little bit different, and it's going to show up right here. Whoa, too many stars. Too many stars. One little thing right there. Let's think about it. What kind of exponent inverted something? Somebody said it. What kind of exponent inverts something? How do you turn a 2 into a half? How do you turn a 3 eighths into an 8 thirds? You raise it to what power? Bueller. Bueller. So that somebody said it. A negative power, right? A negative power. A negative power. A negative power. So what you got to watch out for is notationally that negative one right there. This negative one right here, it doesn't mean one over y. It means we're talking about the inverse of the relation given by the y above. I know this is weird. Okay. So, so to be as clear as I could possibly be, let me get my magic marker going so I can highlight some things. Here's my magic marker. This expression here and this expression here are mathematically, algebraically, and visually, graphically inverses of one another. The original one that's given is denoted by the variable y. Because the other one's the inverse of it, we use that little negative one to indicate that it's an inverse. Make a little bit of sense? Questions, comments, concerns, short debates, long debates. Would anyone care to see how to find the inverse a different way? Because they don't like Algebra 1. <laughs> Example 1, again, <laughs> find the inverse of, oh, <laughs> might help if I write that with real marker. Example one again. <laughs> Find the inverse of y equals, was it 2x minus 3? It was 2x minus 3, right? Good. So we're trying to reflect something over that line y equals x. Now let's take a look at Patrick's head and Patrick's foot. Patrick's head in the original thing was negative 7, 5, and then it became 5, negative 7. Patrick's left foot was negative 7, 0, and then it became 0, negative 7. What happens to your x's and your y's? They switch, right? So when we go to find an inverse, what should happen to our x's and our y's? They should switch. Check it out. Y is now x. X is now Y. Oh! Oh, that's it. That's all you do. Well, kind of. In chapter one, we kind of skipped over this part, but in chapter one, there's a section in the book where you have to solve this equation for this variable right here. I think we can handle that, right? So uh, at some point, we're going to have 2y equal to something, and then eventually we want y equal to something. And in the very end, here's where it gets confusing. Remember, we started with y, so at the very end, at the very end, rather than calling it just y, I'm going to call it y inverse. Okay, I, I, I know that's kind of a, a, a weird thing that has to happen there, but okay. So what should I do first to solve that equation? What should I do to get the, the 2y by itself? Add 3, right on. So we go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So 2y is really, 2y is really um, x plus 3, right? Now how do I get y all by itself? Somebody said it. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Now, x is coefficient 
right here, right there, x's coefficient is really 1, right? There's really a coefficient of 1 out here on that x. So, so what I end up with is uh, x has a coefficient of 1 half and then plus 3 halves. Now, let's, let's compare that to, to the other one. Oh, dude, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Well, of course it's the same thing. What do we think? Make sense? Got in a little bit? Okay. Should we try another one of those? Okay. Do 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 Example two, find the inverse of. Find the inverse of y equals the third root of x and then plus two. Oh, snap, crackle, and pop. X is going to equal the third root of y and then plus two. Right? Switch x, switch y. So what are we going to do? Trying to get y all by itself. We need to get the third root of y all by itself. So we're going to um, minus 2. So x take away 2 is the third root of y. Now we need to get y all by itself. Wouldn't it be nice if we learned how to solve radical equations? Oh, we did learn how to solve radical equations. So now we have to exponentiate both sides to what power? To the third power. To the third power. Third root of y cubed is just y, or the, yeah, the third root of y cubed is just y. Now when I write my final answer, am I going to write y or is there something else I need? y with that little negative 1, that means y inverse. So y inverse is the quantity of x minus 2, the quantity cubed. And that, my friends, my family, my countrymen, my students, is the answer. Who would like to verify that algebraically? It's probably a good idea too, huh? I was thinking about um, flow masters in my dreams. I don't know if you know what flow masters are. Um, I want a new truck. Okay, can't afford one, but I want a new truck. And trucks sound really awesome with with nice mufflers on them. Um, I was thinking about putting headers on it, maybe some. Um, Go to Summit Racing, get some shorty headers. Well, maybe long tube. You get a little more torque with the long tube headers. So anyways, I was thinking about what kind of tips to put on it. Maybe if I get a Chevy truck, put the bow tie. Anybody ever see those bow tie exhaust tips? They're pretty sweet looking. So I was dreaming about all this stuff. I woke up, I was exhausted. That was really bad. That was really bad. My wife likes cows. Did you hear about that one cow that got an award? It was outstanding in its field. Don't quit my day job. Add graphs. Here we go. Menu. Window. Window settings. I'm going to make a square window. Okay. I'm going to make a square window. And I'm going to view the grid. Oh, I can't do that. I guess this has got to be a positive 10. And I'm going to menu, menu, view, lined grid. So I had, um, what did I have? The third root, right? The third root of x with a plus 2 on the side. Okay, that's what that, oh, that's, that's kind of a neat graph. I want to see how it compares to the line y equals x, and I think, I think that my answer is x minus 2, the quantity cubed. Looks pretty good to me. What do we think? But I don't have a graphing calculator, but you have a Chromebook, and you have a smartphone, and you have access to the interweb, the worldwide line, and you could use what? Desmos, if you wanted to check these. How's everybody feeling so far? There is a caveat to this. There is a caveat to this. Somebody should ask a question. Yeah, what is that? What's that? What I mean, let's look it up. $20 word of the day, caveat. That's not caviar, by the way. That's not caviar. 
Um, Miriam Webster, please help us, because this guy keeps using these words that I don't understand. How come the car has no door? Don't you fall out when you drive? Caveat is an explanation or warning that should be remembered. <laughs> an explanation or warning that should be remembered when you are doing or thinking about something. <laughs> Remember I mentioned about the, the horizontal line test before? Last example today. Y equals X minus 4 the quantity squared. Find its inverse. And I'm just going to leave it blank. I, should, I could put a word in here, but I'm not going to. But I could, I, there's a word that needs to go in there, and it's, uh, anyway. So let's see, algebraically, we're going to say x equals y minus 4 the quantity squared. Everybody with me? Well, how do we get y minus 4 by itself? We take the square root, and we take the square root of x, right? So, so y minus 4 equals the square root of x. Everybody with me so far? How do we get y by itself? Add four, add four, add four. So we believe, we believe with all our heart that y inverse is defined as the square root of x plus four, right? We think that, right? Well, I've got news for you. You're going to have to remember my sixth grade physical. Sorry for that image to, to, to play back in your head there. So what did we start with for our function? We started with x, was it minus 2 squared? Minus 4, the quantity squared? Thank you. Okay, so that's a parabola, right? So, so we need something that's going to look like that parabola but turned up or turned over on its side, right? So let's see what we came up with. We came up with the square root of x and then plus 4 on the side, right? Well, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. That's part of it, but that's not all of it. Let me get my camera and take a picture because it'll last longer. <laughs> so, 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 somehow, some way, what I need to do is I need to have another branch of that show up. Does that make sense? How do I get that part of that graph? When I got that physical, I remembered. It was a negative experience, right? To get that bottom part of that graph, I need to have negative the square root of x plus 4 also. So I'm going to need to add another, another thing when I add F4. What's that F stand for? It stands for function, right? I'm adding another function. Not a mother function, but another function. Okay? So the deal is, the deal is, that this alone, this alone isn't my answer. My answer is comprised of that and also negative the square root of x plus 4. How many functions are there? There's two. So we can't say that that is an inverse function, and that's why we use the word inverse relation. Okay? We're almost done here, I promise. So function, relation, whenever you're dealing with, with quadratics, things get a little bit weird. The original function, the original function was a parabola, right? It was a parabola translated four units to the right. The original function looks like that. And I mentioned a test at the beginning of class. Does that original function pass the horizontal line test? No. Because that original function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, its inverse is not 
a function. I'll say that one more time. Because the original function, because the original function does not pass the horizontal line test, because the original function does not pass the horizontal line test, its inverse, its inverse, its inverse is not a function and wouldn't pass the vertical line. Does that make a little bit of sense theoretically? Okay. So we'll talk more on tomorrow. And I didn't mean to say more on, but we'll talk more on tomorrow about the those weird things. But there's homework tonight. It's been real. It's been fun. Shout out to Mr. Jones. It's his last day here. He might be back on Monday, but be sure to, to give him a, um, a, a check you later. Have a great day. See you.